here. Let's see if it actually shows up here. Okay. Let's test this out. Uh, home. Live. Okay. So it is there. Good. Let's go here. So this is what I want to see. Yep, it's got everything that I wanted to have there. So we could expand on that. Let's create some art with Toma 2D. That'll work. Good. All right, let's uh, let's do some. I think what we'll do is we'll switch to F, and we'll do some. Actually, we'll do some stuff here with E. And I think I'm gonna make. We're just going to draw in what would essentially be some grass in around these here. Yeah, we'll do something like this. And then, you know what, we'll come back and yeah, let's do that first. Let's put some stones at the front door. Or at the front gate. Like uh, stepping stones. Like path stones. So we'll go here. We'll go here. And. Nope. Uh, we'll go like this. Good. I like that. We'll put another little stone here. Sort of like that. Yeah. Those look good. And then when I hit them with a gray. They'll make sense. And then we could easily intertwine what we're trying to do with the grass into that or leave it like a dirt path almost so we could just kind of like this off the screen and then yeah sort of like that right and then we could do the same thing here we could sort of travel off the screen like there's a path there perfect and then this is where we can sort of incorporate the grass i think so we'll let all that fill right there. And then what we'll do is we'll just draw this around the side like this. And if, if this is working the way I intend it to, that'll fill. Yep. Okay, good. Delete that. Rush. Beautiful. And we'll do the same thing here. And this should fill. Yep. Good. And the reason we're doing that is we can go like that nice now for in here this is where we can add in those little details so i can come in here and be like little blades of grass and whatnot perfect so like here 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 so then i can delete these and still fill this yep digging it and then here I could like spill some of this. I could sort of like here, here. You kind of do that, right? So here, here, and then sort of in front of that. And then if we wanted to, we could sort of spill this grass out a little bit. So bang, let's go. Mm. Bang. And then maybe bang and then boom, boom, boom. Yep. Good. So that does work and it actually looks pretty good. Um, and then these can just be the stones. Yep. Like stepping stones coming in here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we could even go further with this if we wanted to, you know, like this. And since that's drawing off screen, that, that there doesn't really matter as much and then we can just add as much or as little detail as we want in here with like stones that's too much there i think so we'll just drop this and that looks good right that's got all my stuff that's it's got all my patreon twitter instagram twitch yep it's got all that nice let's do some sketching here today for a bit all right now for the back I think what we're going to do is this. I want to do a mountain, sort of like a hobbit hole. So I think what we're going to do, 
we're going to sort of sketch this. What we're going to do is sketch where the actual Hobbit hole is going to be, I believe. So we'll kind of come in here. I don't know. Not the grass, because the grass I want to play with. So we'll do the, the hole itself. So we'll go... Let's get the let's get the feel for this. We'll go behind the fence and then we'll have it come over here. Is that good? Because what I could do is just move this up and over even. I'm digging that because then we can use that for the entire front of the house. So, all right, then I'm going to take this and go like this, right? Now, what should happen is if I fill this, yep. That should all fill there. Nice. So this is where I can start playing with those details. Um, we'll go. I want to have a window here. I want a round window here. Yeah, round window here. And I think I want a sort of a The shape window here and then what we'll do is this will be sort of the inside edge of the wood like this and then this will be the frame itself yep like that and then we can just sort of We can decide how far we want to go with that. And then same thing over here. Um, there we go. Beautiful. Um, same concept, I suppose. We can sort of have this in to make it look like the edge of the window where the wood is. And then we can sort of... draw that like that if we wanted to and that could be sort of there now what i do want to do is let's get the hobbit hole door in here and i want to hand draw this i don't want to just use a circle shape uh okay we'll come down bring in the corner good and i think what we'll do do for the sake of for the sake of this we'll play with the here yeah we'll go like this good and then hmm, that might be the outer frame of the door and then what if we copied this on the inside shrink it So we take this to what, two? Because this is 1.87. So we can go 1.8 here on a stroke. Good. Now the idea here is once I feel comfortable with this, we'll turn off the fence. So we can sort of design the front of the house in a way, I guess. Um, that's kind of the plan. Um, but I want to get to where I feel like, I feel like the door looks good there. I feel like the door looks good there. Let's um let's do some details there on it. We'll um this can be sort of the shaded edge here ish. So then for the doorknob itself, we'll just kind of well no doorknob would be in the center if it's a hobbit hole. Yep. We'll kind of drop it there. I like that. Coach, how are you? I was testing out something today. I wanted to go live on YouTube because I I don't know if I'm just late to the party, but I saw that they made some changes to the way when you go live, like how your data is presented. Sorry, my coffee's in the way. How your data is presented, like below you. So I um I wanted to fix mine. So now it has like my Twitter, my Twitch. You know what I'm saying? has all that information in there. 
So now I see a better way, like when I go live, like a better way to actually, I should probably should have asked you, you would have been able to answer this, but um, a better way to sort of like go live and have all, all my data right there. So, and I wanted to kind of make sure that was right and go ahead and do a live stream. Yeah, everybody's doing better. Um, I'm on the tail end of it. I'm still tired-ish, <laughs> uh, but doing okay. Uh, Mama's doing good. Uh, Darcy's fine. Um, it was, uh, it was really crazy because we did everything we could to like prevent the spread. It, it didn't matter. And, um, you know, I ended up getting it and it's just been a, it's been a, it's been a crazy week, but, uh, here we are. We're good. How are you doing? Let's turn the fence off. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you what, we, 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 we put her in a different room, coach. I had my own hand sanitizer. She had her own, you know, we, we were doing everything we could to keep everybody healthy and it just, it, it latched. But I mean, you know, to be fair, it's kind of hard when you're in a confined space, right? It's kind of hard to prevent the spread of something like that. And it just, yeah, it bit us in the butt. How have you been? How are you feeling? How are things going for you? Oh, I kind of like that curved line. Let's do that. And I want to see if we can't make this a beam. Let's, let's make this a beam. Nice. I feel like lately with my knee and, and everything else, I feel so out of sync with <laughs> anything to do with content creation that I'm, I'm really trying. I'm trying. But it's like, man, I just lately, you know, with life and family, it'll get you, bud. Like it, it's, it's, uh, it's a challenging thing for sure. So I'm playing around in Tahoma. Um, I've been sort of brainstorming on like Tahoma in general and what I want it to do for me in terms of like, you know, creation and where I sort of sit with it. And so I've been, I've been doing some like random drawings and stuff in Tahoma. And part of that is I, I hear a lot of people that kind of get I don't want to say frustrated, but they get sort of confused or frustrated with like how to create in Tahoma. And so I wanted to, I want to create more content that kind of showcases that for people. So I've been doing some like sketching and stuff in Tahoma, just kind of, you know, drawing and stuff. It's, yeah, it's been something. And I wish I could dedicate more time to everything content creation, but I, I can't. It's just not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a feasible thing for me, unfortunately. I do my best to produce when I can, you know, um, I really do, you know, and I hope that in my own little way, the content that I do produce helps people and they can learn from it. You know, that that's the best I can offer. It, it's a great piece of software. It really is coach. Um, and you know, the thing is I see a lot of people, so I'll show you what I've been doing. A lot of people that I've been seeing, like they've been so focused on animating and I have myself that you almost forget to pay attention to the drawing tools themselves. And I was like, no, 
I'm going to I'm going to get back into like the the drawing with this software because I, I've said this before and I think it's really important to understand how to make art in a program, right? Not just animate. You, you have to have a fundamental knowledge of how to create what it is you're trying to animate. And so I think it's really important to, uh, you know, just spend some time just creating art. You know what I mean? So I made like all these little scenes of like just different things, just playing around, just having fun. Paid some, uh, the remote production. Heck yeah. You'd love to do them full time. Yeah, I'm I'm still in the let's find full time work gig myself. So I know exactly what you mean. Uh, that that's kind of my goal long term is to get into full time remote stuff. So right there with you. Let's go like the. go more like this that way it's kind of back off the thing a bit yeah i like that a bit more yeah but i've just been drawing and honestly i haven't felt well so it was like it was nice to just kind of sketch you know what i mean so lately i've just been instead of focusing so much on you know animating or this or that i've just been drawing you know um uh, i even 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 installed clip studio paint uh, because I do own it, and I have a bunch of friends that swear by it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to install it. I'm going to play around with it. So I installed it, and I've been sort of toying with it, but I don't know on that one. Um, I don't know if that will ever become like a, a tool that I use on a regular. I don't know yet. That I haven't made a decision yet, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm sorry, what? Last time I saw him, we had him in the shed. Because we were working on something out there. Yeah. I think that's the last time I saw him. What are you trying to do? Oh. You guys got to provide your own supplies? Hmm. Right, they're not spending the money. It's the same times. Yeah, it could be, you know. Yeah. Let's go like here. We'll try to make this look like split wood segments, but we'll do it in a way that has a little bit of like this. And then we'll work on some wood grain textures and stuff. And then, yeah, we'll plop this back in for the front and we'll, we'll get going on the coloring here in a minute. In fact, it might be smart to go ahead and color the fence. We'll see. But yeah, I've just been drawing and stuff, just having fun uh, creating really. Uh, just trying to get back into the swing of things, ultimately. And so for this, we could just add some wood grain textured stuff in that. This would be pretty simple, like we could do. And then we could just play with that. Stuff like that. This, we can just shrink the... We can play with it like this. Yeah, that'll be pretty simple. We'll be about to add a bunch of texture. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's kind of play with the texture stuff here. But yeah, things have been good, you know? On the men, making art, having fun. And I'm hoping to do some more, like, just, just basic art with Tahoma, right? Because I feel like with uh, Tahoma and with OpenTune, people... You know, again, it is an animation software, but I feel like a lot of people, they they focus more on, like, bringing in art to animate it rather than, uh, you know, trying to actually create within the program. And I feel like it's important to have that at least fundamental understanding of how to do things.
All right, good. Yeah, I'm digging that. We can do some more texture here. I think that looks good, maybe. Yeah, I mean, that'd, that'd be a way to... I'd love to be able to do, like, a crosshatch almost effect, but I'm not sure it would be able to emulate well with this. Let's just, uh... We'll just go through and add some small details in here and there, make it look more like wood. Bum, 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 dun, dun, dun. You know what would be really cool? I'd like to actually... I might... You know what? We could do that because it's vector. Let's just add in some points and play with this. Uh, select linear. There we go. All cross-platform? What do you mean? Between OpenTunes and Tahoma themselves? That's good. Let's add, let's do these details on some of these front fence stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the, um, yes, the, the software themselves, they, they function the same on, you know, whatever system you're on. The biggest differences between like what is an open tunes and Tahoma is open tunes is um, from my understanding and you know anybody's welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. I believe open tunes is updated by someone who works closely with Studio Ghibli or at least in that vein um, and but because it's an open source thing uh, Tahoma is produced by people who are using the you know, the open tunes code and everything, but they're kind of putting in their own unique features that don't, some don't exist in open tunes. Um, so what they're doing is they're trying to develop the software beyond even what is currently, you know, available in open tunes. So there will be some differences between Tahoma and open tunes. Um, I personally prefer Tahoma over open tunes, but that's only because I like some of the vector tools that are found within Tahoma that don't exist in OpenTunes. And that has to do with the fact that they have personally developed some features that aren't, you know, included in the OpenTunes release. Um, that's not saying that Tahoma is better than OpenTunes. I just personally prefer it, right? Um... Because people all often ask, they're like, well, why don't you just use open tunes? And it's like, well, I really like some of the the functionality that's included here. Uh, there's some nice functionality in open tunes that are in Tahoma that I really like. Um and so I just that's the one I decided to sort of roll with. Yep. Alright, let's I'm just adding some small details and stuff here. And I personally recommend and suggest Tahoma for people that want to start with a open tunes or Tahoma type software because Tahoma is built to be more approachable, more user friendly. Uh, open tunes is built from the perspective of people who are already using the software within a studio, right? So they already have more of a fundamental knowledge of what the software does and how it functions. And that's where, um, you know, Tahoma is built to be more like, hey, this is user friendly, approachable from like if me or you were to just go out and grab a coach. Right. Um, because we don't have the level of training that someone, say, working in Studio Ghibli or something like that would have, obviously. Um, so, yeah, that's where it's nice. Yeah. So what have what have, what have you been keeping busy with? I mean, besides you, have you been playing any games, uh, any entertainment things you've been into? Or I've just been sort of hum ho. I've been like 
haven't really been playing a lot of games. I've been doing a lot of Blender. A lot of Blender. Um, I've just been kind of keeping my head down and just drawing and, and working on stuff. Still working on, like, grand ideas of things I want to do. Things I want to make. And lately, I've just been like, you know what? I just want to spend more time drawing in Tahoma. All work all the time. Yeah, I, I, I get you. I get you on that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start doing some more like open tune Tahoma videos or Tahoma more likely though on like just different techniques, you know, to help people. All right. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, this coach, like I draw with a mouse. So, you know, part of part of what I do is to help educate people and teach people that, you know, you can use a mouse to do this stuff. Um, you know, because I think a lot of people had a crash and that will happen. It is open source free software. You know, it's it's a lot of people. I think like I get this all the time. People are like, why don't you use a drawing tablet? And it's like, well, I mean, you can uh, obviously that's entirely up to you. I just personally, I prefer, you know, I prefer using a uh, mouse. It works for me. Cracks it up. And they do. They do. And I and I, I warn people that, you know, you're using open source software. Things are going to happen. And save often. Save. Save liberally, which I do. I hit Alt-S or uh, Control-S constantly. Like, I'm saving so much you guys don't even realize it. Yeah, it's looking good. Drawing tab will match up, I think. I mean, you know, the the thing is, is like, I always tell people, how you doing, Honda? But I tell people, like, if you're comfortable using a drawing tablet, use one. Uh, personally, I enjoy a mouse. Um, it it gives me the control and the functionality that I'm looking for. Um, so it's what I use, you know. I, um, you know, if you find that a drawing tablet works better for you, use one. You know, personally, I just, I enjoy the way that the mouse gives me the, the flow and the control I want, you know, it, it's, it works. I don't know why, maybe my brain's broken, but it just makes sense to me when I draw to use the mouse. Oh, hey, Grim, what's up, dude? Yeah, it works for me. And I agree with you. I think a drawing tablet would mess me up because I've talked at length with, um, with Galen about this and I'm like, I just, every time I go to use a drawing tablet, my brain shuts off. You know, it's just, I, it's like, I forget how to draw, but when I, when I dig into a mouse, it just, my brain clicks and I'm like, yep, time to draw, you know, it just works, man. It works. <clears throat> Fuse a mouse, my wrist hurts. See, people ask me that a lot. They're like, does your wrist hurt using a mouse? I'm like, ah, no, I, I don't. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just like half computer or something. Hey, Jim, how you doing? How are you getting a tapered end? Oh, right here. If you hit B, if you leave pressure on, so if we turn pressure off, you're going to get a butted end line, right? But if you leave pressure on, you will get the tapered end on the end you start with, Jim. So like, if you want the tapered end sticking up, you would draw this way. If you want it sticking down, you would draw this way. So you can still get that tapered end, right? And then you can just, and that way it still has that pen drawn look. But you just have to angle it the way that you want it because the, the ending end will be round, the beginning end will be tapered, right? And then of course you could always take the, uh, the pump tool and you could, you know, you could do this as well. I don't know if you know about the pump tool, but like you can, you can do things like this to kind of taper the other end a little bit. So either way, either way. It is. And I own one. I own one. I just, I can't get with it. It's every time I go to use it, I just, it shuts off, man. It just shuts down. All right, let's go ahead and start coloring in this front. Uh, I think it's going to help create that separation a little bit. And then we'll keep adding details and, and whatnot. Uh, let's just, we'll add in some small... 
So for those that are curious, what I've been doing lately is I've just been kind of drawing in Tahoma, right? I I understand the basis of animation in Tahoma. Makes sense. Um, what I'm kind of doing is getting back into I'm trying I'm just trying to get back into like just just drawing, right? From from the idea of creation within Tahoma. Because I, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, but like I see so many people that focus so much on using the animation tools that they tend to kind of neglect the the idea of creating within the software. So lately I've been kind of on this kick of just drawing in the software. So if you guys didn't see it, like I've been drawing just like random characters and stuff and all this was drawn in Tahoma. So it's just a matter of kind of digging into the art a little bit. I can, I really don't prefer it anymore, Grim, which is weird, but it's just my, br I, I just don't enjoy it. Like if I'm, if I'm chilling, I'll pick up like a tablet and a pencil and I'll kind of sketch, but I just, I don't go out of my way to do it. Right. Like I don't, I don't go like, Hey, this is what I want to do, but I'll do it, you know? Um, but yeah, I've been drawing things like this. Just been kind of getting back into the habit of creating art in Toma. Um, I think it's weird because I've been using, um, I've been using digital for so long, right? That it's like my, my brain just kind of prefers digital at this point, I guess. And so it's what I do. It's what I stick to. Um, and you know, I have a style, like my style is very clean. It's very, it's very, you know, it's a very, it's that style. Like you can see with its art, it's all my style. Um, and, uh, it's just kind of the way that I create, you know? Um, so lately I've been like, yeah, let's just draw stuff. And, uh, Jim, what I've been doing is I'm going to start doing more, um, quick vector drawing, Tahoma drawing stuff, um, on my channel. So it's just going to be like, Hey, you know, let's draw a character, let's draw a whatever. Right. And it's just going to be like a quick, how I use vectors within Tahoma, just to kind of show people my method for drawing. Uh, because I've had a lot of interest. People have said, like, how in the world do you, you know, how are you using this? What are you doing kind of thing? So I think I'm going to kind of, I'm going to get into some more, like, just small, you know, here, here's my method. Here's my process. Because my goal, ultimately, with everything I do, is just try to help people learn and get better. So they can have their own craft and their own experiences. Yeah, we'll go with that. I saw your art supplies on uh, Galen's Discord, Grim. The, the stuff you picked up. Yep, I like that tapered end there. That looks good. And then what we'll do... We're just going to kind of keep these going. So I want to try a line like this. And then let's cut this. And let's take this and... What's nice is we can just pump that line a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I hope that helped, Jim, with the tapered end question. I mean, I tend to leave the pressure on just because I like it. I like that tapered end. Quite the change. I mean, you know... I, I love all art. I may not do it. You know what one of my f absolute favorite art forms in the whole world is? And I think you've heard me say this before, Grim, watercolor. I absolutely love watercolors. Um, when I did traditional art, watercolor was my medium of choice. Um, if I were to pick up watercolor now, my brain would break in half. <laughs> but I love watercolors. I think it's a very cool medium. I love the, the style and the flow that it gives. Um... I'm just a big fan, you know, always have been. Um, so yeah, I get it for sure. Do you need some pencils? I got a whole bunch. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I've got a bunch if you need some. Like this? Oh yeah. I got a ton. <laughs> like, I mean, if you, <laughs> if you want some, I mean, yeah, take them. Yeah. That the pressure button would work with all with the mouse. Exactly. It works because what it does is it like it simulates that taper, right? Even though you're not using pressure. So if you're smart about it, you can be like, oh, you know, I want 
I want this to look sort of hand drawn right there, right? There you go. You see that? Now, if we turn that off, you're going to see a completely different look, right? It's going to be just your traditional look. Yep. It's a really cool little effect I found. And I was like, so I just roll with it. <laughs> In a while. Hey, man, go for it, dude. I love seeing people get creative, you know, with different ideas and different techniques. I think it's really cool to see people just get out there and express themselves. You know, art is a really cool thing and it's fun to share your ideas and your, and your creations with people. I love it. And, you know, and lately I'll this, the way I work is sort of chaotic. I've been really heavy in blender lately, like super heavy in the blender and the way that I kind of do it is I dig really heavy into something for a while, like a couple weeks, and then I'll take a break from it for like a week or two, right? And I'll let everything that I learned sort of absorb, and then I'll go back to it. Because I kind of reach a point where my brain's overfilled or overactive in what I'm doing. And so then I kind of, I take a step back for a little bit, let my brain settle, and then I kind of hit it hard again. So I'm still using Blender every day. I'm just not as heavy uh, because I'm trying to just kind of let it all sink in. And then I was like, well, what could I be doing? And I was like, you know what? I really need to just do some drawing in Tahoma. So that's, that's what I decided. Just kind of rock and roll for a bit. Hey, Vale, how are you, bud? Good to see you. And now I feel like actually being human again, which is good. So. All right. That's looking really good. I'm liking the details we're getting out of those. How you been, buddy? How's the weather and everything out there? Yeah, that looks good. I like the way this is looking. Let's let's go ahead. Um, we'll, we won't put anything on the sign yet. If we decide to add any details, we'll do that later. Let's get a wood. Let's go ahead and start coloring the zone. And see, this is where I want to show you guys some cool techniques with like shading and coloring and stuff, right? Oh, I, uh, I don't know if you heard me earlier, um, Graham, but I got um, uh, do, 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 do Clip Studio reinstalled. Um, I, um, I've i owned Clip Studio longer than I've owned Affinity, believe it or not. Um, the problem is I've never used it. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and install it. Even if I don't use it, I'm going to go ahead and get it installed, right? Because I own it. I mean, I, I might as well. So I decided to go ahead and put it on and I've been sort of playing with the vector that it has and it's a very sort of loose vector. Um, so I'm kind of playing with it and trying to understand it. But um, yeah, I'm getting there. Doing good. I made another proxy army for a skirmish war game. Oh, very cool, man. I need to get with you now that I'm feeling better. I saw your, uh, your comment in there in Discord. See what it is you were. Looking for or looking at. <clears throat> Let's go with like a, I want sort of an off green. It's, it's sort of a, it's a, um, it's different, right? Because it's not vector. It's, um, the only word I can think of it is it's sort of a simulated vector, right? So it, what it does is it gives you the ability to affect the nodes of a line and to affect the lines like a vector shape, but it is still raster, if that makes sense. You don't lose your anti-aliasing. You don't lose your raster effects. It's, it's sort of a simulated uh, vector. It's loose, but it, I mean, it works. It's, um... I don't think I would use it as a replacement for anything like Tahoma or Affinity by any stretch of the imagination. But would I use the tools every now and then for, for some fun? Yes. Uh, if I just wanted to do some like fun art and stuff, yeah. Um, but it, it's definitely going to be a, um, you know, a specific use thing. Um, now, is Clip Studio planning on ever doing a more diverse vector thing? I doubt it. Probably not. But, you know, I don't, I don't know.
I need three isometric style robots for a project. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely do isometric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot me a message on Discord, Val. Like what it is you're thinking and what it is, like what what that kind of thing. And I'll and I'll I'll get with you on that. <clears throat> I liked your 2D 3D pick last week. That's where I'm headed. Love a turnaround on a 3D detail. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And and I've really been getting heavy into Blender with 2D and mixing 2D and 3D and stuff. I um I love Blender. I think Blender has an amazing future, and I think it has a ton of potential. The thing with Blender is it's like any software, right? There, there you have to learn ways and techniques of doing things, and Blender definitely has its own unique way of doing things. And you really got to spend some time just deep diving. Um, and I'm getting there. Like I'm, I'm to the point where I finally feel semi-confident in what I'm doing. Um, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I did a, uh, I was pretty happy. I'll show you guys what I've been working on. So. You guys know, like, a big part of what I do is I attempt to really understand creating art within a program. Like, I'm not, I'm nothing against it, but I'm not a big fan of just, like, importing art and, and moving it. Like, I really attempt to, um, like, really understand what I'm doing. So, we've been redoing the raid scene. For those that haven't seen it, uh, we're still in the process of that. Uh, we have the beginning part of the raid scene right here. And you can see the parallax and everything that's going on. Um, and this was all drawn in Blender. And then I'm moving over to the inside step. And this is going to be the new look. You know, you've got the cats and everything here. But you can see it's all it's all in that 3D plane, right? Like for parallaxing. Um, and I've also been doing 3D stuff. So I've been digging into like, um, you know, other things as well. Um, and just 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 learning. It's really, really learning. Um, yeah, it's good. Learning the keyboard shortcuts for a common thing. It really is. Um, Blender is, to me, so far, and all the softwares that I've learned, is like the key to... Uh, I made this with sort of a Cthulhu head. Um, this was pretty cool. This was a, a sculpt that I did. Uh, and this one here, I did completely different than my Isaac character. This one was done with um, actually very low poly. This one was done with very little faces. And I worked with uh, just sort of sculpting this into what it is. And you can see how this actually started right here. I mean, it was extremely, extremely low poly. Um, this stuff here. And I, I'm sort of working on creating it into, you know, these steps where I can, like, model it and things like that. Um, careful, bud. Keyboard, yeah, yeah. Hey, Shadow, what's up, buddy? Gonna be so much fun to watch. Yes, yes, it, it will, Coach. And I'm always gonna keep the original around for fun, but I'm really looking forward to bringing a new style to it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm really trying to understand. Here was another house I'm working on. Now, this is really cool. I'm excited to show you guys this, actually. So I'm getting into texture painting. Now, this is very loose, but you see these columns here, how they all have a hand-painted texture look to them. I did these. Uh, so this is another little house scene I'm working on, sort of a graveyard. And you can see the witch's house with the windows. And this was one that me and Darcy picked. And I'm doing sort of this glow, and I'm working on the ground right now. But I put these hand-painted, sculpted uh, things in here, and I created the fence post, and I created the ground, and look, I added these gravestones. I've not done anything with them yet. I haven't painted them or anything, but, like, I'm really... The whole idea of 3D is really beginning to click. Like, I'm really starting to make sense in my head. Um, and so now I'm kind of moving into more, like, advanced things, like understanding how how to do, like here I did all this brick texturing and, you know, the light around the door. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. What's and of that? course I'm doing 2D stuff. Hmm? What's that? What's what, baby? That's that witch house. The hole. Which hole? The oh, hole right 
Here? No, there. Here? Yeah. That's like a basement. See? There's like basement lights down there. And the whole house is glowing red because who knows? What do you think going on inside this house? Bad uh, stuff, right? Murder. Murder? Oh, Lord. Might be. <laughs> it would be. It would be, dude. He's screaming. 3D printing. Oh, nice, dude. Yeah, my goal is to get to where I can offer my stuff for people to 3D print. I think I, I'm probably, if I get good enough, that's probably going to be like a, um, a, uh, I want to do some Patreon stuff with that. You know, people, I can do like a monthly 3D thing or something like that. All right, so this is looking pretty good. What are you guys thinking about this so far and the colors and everything? Digging it? I'm liking it. Now, do you guys want to see how I would shade this? Because shading is a whole different thing in um, in Tahoma, but it works if you understand the process. Um, and it works pretty well, actually. It's a little finicky because of the vector, but it works. Um, and then we've got the Hobbit hole coming up behind it. So let's let let's get back into detailing the Hobbit hole now that we have these sort of drawn. And let's go here. Fill that in, nice. Okay, and this gives us this that we can sort of move. Yeah, man, it, it's been good. I was uh, sick all last week. Uh, my wife had COVID. I got it um, from her. Which was, you know, we were trying to be really cautious and everything. Didn't work out. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So I ended up getting it again. So I'm finally over that. Uh, and feeling halfway alive again. Which is which is good. Which is a good thing. Yeah, that'll look good there. And then we'll, we'll create. And then we'll add all the details and move. Hey, Darren. What's up, buddy? Good stream today, dude. That was fun. Need more depth? Yeah, there will be. I'm um I'm gonna add some objects in there and stuff. Right now, I'm just sort of creating the the front, which is gonna be the gate and everything. And then I'm gonna add the rear. And then I'm gonna add right now. I'm actually gonna do it right now. We're gonna work on adding the the top piece, which is gonna be like the grassy mound. Um, it's gonna work out pretty good. Shade diversity channel on YouTube where they eat. Like a hobbit for a day and regret it. Oh, good lord, Vale. Yeah, no. I've actually been trying to eat a lot better since the beginning of the year. I've been cleaning up my diet and I've been trying to, like, exercise what I can, given my knee and everything, and just trying to, you know, sort of move. Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting one, but we're getting there. Yeah, I'm still on that kick, Darren, where I'm sort of, like, just drawing in Tahoma. Just trying to kind of keep that moving. Because I'm really trying to get back into the creating within Tahoma. Not just not just being so focused on like the animation side of it. So we, we just drew this whole scene here. Um, so it's it's working. It's working. Had my break. Had a snack. Ready to see some vector. Hey, right on, dude. Right on. Uh, so what's happening right now? Uh, I'm in a, a remote role, Grim. Um, and they wanted to give me two more months in the remote role. So I have one more month of the remote role left. If my knee isn't better to go back to work in a month, then I'll stay in the remote role. If my knee's better, then I have the option of going back to my old, old role. So yeah, they, they basically came up with a solution that worked. So at this point, basically I've got a month left or a uh, remote left, and then we'll see where it goes from there. Um, in terms of like long-term longevity, right? Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a solution. Um, you know, so, Hey, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. I've just been, um, yeah, it is. It's good, man. Yeah. I've just been like getting into art creation, uh, Darren, just kind of like, you know, playing with just drawing in Tahoma, just to kind of give people some visibles on that. Um, because I think, like I was saying the other day, I think we get so focused on animating that we tend not to worry about the creation of the art itself. I know I do. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do some some sketching and stuff and kind of show people what you can do with Vector. 
um, and styles and creations and everything. Yeah, we'll we'll move that. Because I feel like a lot of people, you know, that's a question they have, like, what can you actually do? And that's a valid question. And I do draw with a mouse because I'm a crazy man. So. Just get that out of the way. What's the cat doing? Good. It is, though. Yeah, I was I was happy with the, you know, the outcome. Um, you know, with what they decided to do and everything. It works. The cartoon style? Yeah, it's. So this is all leaning into the comics that I want to make. Uh, I've got some little D&D inspired comics that I've been working on. And this is a style that I want to kind of use for the scenery and stuff. It's sort of a hand-drawn sort of cartoony look. And uh, I'm happy with it. I like it. And it's something that I want to start kind of incorporating. So I'm, I'm sort of working on it into home and like, what would it look like? Because I've said this before and I mean this wholeheartedly. I'm a big fan of creating art in the software I'm animating in, right? Like, I don't mind importing things once in a while, but like, I want to draw my art in the program because I feel like if you're working on the fly and you want to add something to animate it, it's harder to sort of focus on the like, well, let's import it, let's, you know, mold it, model it. I'd rather just be able to create on the fly. And so I spend a lot of time sort of getting used to the idea of just creating. Yeah. You know, it'd be really cool. And I just thought of this. I wonder if I can pull this off. Let's try this out. What about like a knot in the wood? Now here's one of the cool tools that I like. I like keeping snapping on, right? And this was something I asked uh, about ages ago. And I love snap because I love being able to, you know, get a nice clean intersection. But what's really cool, and some people don't know this, if you hold down shift and control, you'll momentarily ignore snap. So you can leave your snap on and you can just sort of overdraw it like this. See? And then, but your snap is still on. Really useful little, uh, little shortcut. And that was something I asked for ages ago because I was like, I love leaving snap on, but I don't want to be coming up here turning snap on and off. And he was like, oh, how about this? And so now you can just, you know, my snap's on or I can just ignore snap. See? So this way I can get super close to it like this, but not snap to it. See? So I can get like all the way up into here and not be snapped. It's useful. That's one thing I like about Tahoma. Static images and open tune just because I uh, know the drawing tools in it. Yeah. And that's, that's important, right? Because I think it's, it's part of showing people that this software is capable and it can do things. Um, and I think it's like anything, right? Learning Photoshop, learning, you know, anything is a daunting task. And I think it's just, it's, it's cool to kind of show people the potential and the ideas of what the software is capable of. Yep. Hmm. Let's go more like this. What are you doing, cat? Oh, that's baby cat. Yeah, so I won't be doing any animating today. Uh, we're just kind of doodling. And we're making this uh, hobbit hole. I assume most people can kind of tell what it's going to be. But... Okay. Go here and then we'll go here. Kind of conform it to the shape of the wood. And I want to put like a little flag or something hanging off that, but we'll, that'll be a detail. Let's get, so I want to do something cool. I'm going to show you guys. I think this will turn out really neat. We'll kind of do the top here. We're going to kind of make this like a grassy knoll, right? And, oh, by the way, guys, as I'm doing this, if anybody has questions, feel free to chime in. Feel free to ask, like always. I'm open to questions. I'm open to, uh, you know, discussing ideas and 
like you guys are more than welcome to i'm a big fan of that so don't don't be afraid to don't be afraid to speak up if you if you need something yeah, let's do this. We'll keep this style rolling. And I'm actually going to have some grass overhang on the roof, I think. About right here. Uh, I'm not feeling that. Let's, yeah, I like that. All right, let's do this. Good. Now, well, this is what we're going to do to add the detail. You notice what I just did there. I went ahead and made the basic shape, right? And if we turn this on, you're not seeing all that overage, okay? Now, here's where I'll come back in and add the detail. And what I mean by that is I'm going to come in and I'm going to add like little details to here. So let's say I wanted this to look like a little like a little grass floof right here. Right. This is where I'll use that ignore snap and I'll kind of go like this. Right. And I'll just kind of draw this out. And then let's go sort of like this. And then as long as you're overlapping and you're creating a space for the color to fill, you can come back in and you can delete that kind of stuff, see? And then you're creating that sort of a grass texture. The next thing I'll do is up here, I want a little bit to overhang, right? Same process, just like this. See? So this way it looks sort of grown into it uh the process of it anyways and yeah what turns out ty what's up dude how are you man good to see you thanks everybody for coming over today i i do occasional streams on youtube uh i like to keep content over here as well so um yeah i mean if you guys are following you'll definitely see it um i like to just you know go live here once in a while share what i do uh streams on twitch as well you know it's uh it's just nice to do something a little different once in a while but thank you good to see you buddy hope you're doing well man Yeah, good. Today we're just doing some sketches and just kind of hanging out and chatting and nice. It is. It's super good here. Um, uh, I I love so much about uh, live streaming on YouTube. The the biggest issue I have on YouTube is finding live content if I'm not already following someone, right? So like. If I'm following somebody, I have no issue seeing, hey, they're providing content. But like if I'm searching for artists on YouTube that are live, I feel sort of confused and conflicted as to how to locate that. Um, and that's the biggest complaint I hear from people is how do you find people that are doing stuff? And I agree that is that's a concern. But for those that don't know, I've actually broken a thousand subs here. Um, which is cool. So, uh, I've actually got a, a pretty good little following here. Um, and, um, so it's nice to be able to provide content over here as well to the people who do sub to me. Uh, a lot of the people that sub here, they sub because I, I create uh, tutorial stuff here. I'm providing tutorials on like blender affinity, uh, to home and things like that. So when I stream here, it tends to be more focused on like something specific in a software. So it's almost like an episode, episodic, like they can go through and watch kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's cool. <clears throat> Spend more time on YouTube. Three. Yeah, it's weird, right? And I, I feel as though if YouTube could nail that a little better, I really feel like this could be such a viable option for so many people. Um, because the biggest complaint I hear from people is, how do I even know you're live, right? And right, I get it. It's it's a little confusing sometimes. But yeah, I love the quality here. I love the, the way it works and everything. So congrats. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shadow, coach, appreciate it. Yeah, I um, I do stuff here. You know, I do, uh, I do mostly tutorial stuff here because I, you guys know me. I like to share what I do. Uh, I like to help people. Um, and I do make it a point. Uh, you guys will notice, like, in my comments, I don't leave a comment unanswered. I uh, I make sure if somebody has a question, I go out of my way to try to help them. Um, because, you know, I, I enjoy helping people kind of learn this stuff. And um, always try to, I always try to when I can. Um, but, yeah. Let's do a smaller one right here. I think it's really nice. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it on YouTube. I do. Have you tried streaming over here, Ty? 
Oh, for those that don't know, I just want to throw this out here real quick. So there, there's two people in chat for sure that I know that stream here and they offer really good content. The, your tech coach, she does a lot of tech informational stuff here on YouTube. If you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, uh, definitely a good person to follow. Darren T. He is really, really good on here as well. He does a lot of open tunes and Tahoma, this kind of stuff, like animation stuff. So if you guys are interested in that kind of content, definitely follow those two. Uh, they, they provide some great, great information. You catch me easier on YouTube than Twitch. Right. And see, they have to do that though. Right, Jim? And yeah. You can find live content by going to youtube.com feed explore. Now, can you filter by live only coach? Or yeah, what I was saying though, Jim is like, you know, like if you were to just go look for straight artists that are live right now, you know, that, that sometimes can be a little bit, you know, I haven't streamed here, but man, it looks so good. It does. It's very clean. It's a great platform. Um, and the back end, everything works really well. Uh, if you look below me, you'll see all my, like, you know, you can do your links with all my Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, you know, you can, I mean, it, it, it works. The back end looks really good from where you're live streaming. You have all your analytics. You can see how many viewers, chat rate, playbacks, watch time. I mean, all, all of it's there. It's just a matter of getting into it. Right. Um, you know a live option to click on it okay i'll have to look at that then because people ask that all the time coach and i'm like oh, i don't know <laughs> i just draw pictures man like <laughs> all right i want to put a birdhouse in this picture somewhere and i want some bushes this is where we're going to put depth shadow you were asking earlier how we're going to put depth in here we're going to turn the fence off momentarily because we're doing this on separate layers And we're going to, this bush here, we're going to, we're going to put some bushes here, I think. And then scroll down to live now. Okay. Yeah, it does look good though, Ty. It looks really, really good. And I never thought it looked bad, but seeing just how clear the stream is coming through. Yes. They have, uh, well, you know, the thing with YouTube, right, is they know what they're doing when it comes to video. Clearly. I mean, they're the biggest in the industry. And... So their, their technology is really good. And what they do, not just for like video playback, but live streaming, it's good. <laughs> and, um, you know, I feel like most people, the biggest hurdle I see with people here is discoverability. Like I was just talking about, like a lot of people they are like, it's great if you have a following, but if you don't have a following, how do you get found? And, and I hear that question a lot. Maybe that would be something, Coach. If you've got any videos on that or information on that, because I get that a lot from live streamers. They're like, how do people find me over there? You know? I'm like, right. Oh, okay. So if, if you're so if you're if you're finiting it, so if you're looking for Tahoma right now, you'll see it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. We're going to turn off the fence for a minute and I'm going to do some, uh, I'm going to do some bushes. These are how I draw bushes in case anyone's curious. Now, here's the other thing I do. We'll turn the fence back on. I don't care. I want to show you something really cool. I don't care what the bottom of this bush looks like, right? Because you're not going to see it. The fence isn't going to be in front of it, right? So it can literally, I could do this if I wanted to. It doesn't matter because we're not going to see it. So all I'm going to do is enclose that shape so that when I fill it, it's filled. That's all I care about right now. Drawing or care, right. That way people would see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Instead of, I see. Yeah, Jim, that makes sense. Yep. YouTube is all about getting answers to questions. Right. Yeah, coach. Yeah. You have set. Discoverability in general, right? Like the number one way to grow on Twitch is to make YouTube videos. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I said this when the stream started, Ty. I am terrible when it comes to content creation because like I, I just like sharing what I do, right? And so I'm not really good about like marketing myself or, you know, anything like that. And like, 
you know, it's one of those things I tried to be better about it and be more like, you know, methodical. I just like sharing what I do, you know, so I'm not like a guru on it, but I share what I know. Mm hmm. Yeah. I went to an incognito work and searched on YouTube for live animation, and it does show lots of land. But does it really work? Which you already have, so who knows why YouTube? Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. Does anyone else stream here? I know. I know Darren does. I know Coach does. Anybody else stream over here? Jim, do you stream over here? Anybody does, let me know. I'll be glad to drop you guys a follow and support you out. You know, I... All right, now watch. We're going to take this. Again, don't care what that looks like down there. Now, in order to make this look better, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add in some small details. So we'll turn this off again. You know what I could do? I could just leave this on. I'm being kind of dumb here. I could just turn the opacity down instead of turning it on and off. That way I'll see the guides, but I won't see it. There you go. Smart moves, Jeremiah. Smart moves. Let's be smarter. Work smarter. So it is different. It is still vector, though, believe it or not. So what I'm doing right here, these are vector. This is These are vector brushes, so they can still be manipulated like vector shapes. Um, so there's two ways that I draw in Tahoma. Um, I will use the vector brush and I'll create vector shapes like this, right? And then I'll fill them and then I can edit them just like a vector shape. I can add points, right? So it's still vector in nature, or I'll go over to, to the polyline tool and I will create more straight edge looking vector stuff, which is probably what you're more used to seeing things like this, say but you can still make both forms of vector art. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm sort of just kind of doing some sketching because Tahoma is is natively a an animation software. That's what Tahoma does. But what I'm kind of doing is I'm going back and sort of making sure that I'm comfortable and understanding the drawing process within Tahoma so that it's just like anything, right? You got to sort of work that muscle. I'm working on creating the art in the animation software using the tools that are provided rather than importing the art and then manipulating it. I'm looking at how is it created, right? And, and hopefully in doing this, I'm showing other people kind of giving them some clues on how to create art in here as well, or the process by which I use so that they can see a start to finish kind of thing. Uh, so lately I've been doing stuff like this. I've just been drawing like random characters and stuff, random scenery. So I made this dude last night sitting here. He's got like these little flaming fists and he's wearing, he's like floating, I guess, like a wizard or something. I don't know. And I, and I worked on some, you know, some sort of like shading on the sleeves and stuff from the, uh, from the fire. And then I made this dude the other night I was watching, um, I was listening to some HP Lovecraft, of course, uh, some narrated Lovecraft. And I drew this, uh, octopus thing coming out of a pool of water, um, and then I made this little scene here. I drew this little weird looking dude, you know, obviously getting chased by this creature with slime coming out of its mouth. And, and so what I've been doing is just kind of going back to the, how do we draw here? And, and the thing with this is, it's, it's definitely different looking than my regular art, but it's very close. Um, it's just more stroke based and it looks more hand drawn in a way than per se, like traditional vector art. Yeah. Yep. You are correct. That's the thing I tell people when you come to see my content. You never know what the heck I'm going to be working on. One day I'll be doing this style. Next day I'll be doing something completely different. My brain is sort of like whatever the heck I'm in the mood for <laughs> dictates what I'm, what I'm doing. And I never know what I'm in the mood for until I start drawing. Okay. Now, I want this to look like a wood pattern down here as well. Yeah, that that's the way I want to do this. So we're going to do two fills here. Yeah. So we'll do a fill here and a fill here. So I want this bottom to look like a wood grain texture almost. So I think what I'm going to do is... 
almost give this like a plank look. We'll just we'll just roll and then we'll just kind of go from there. <clears throat> I can't come up with ideas. You're amazing in this, but I oh, appreciate it, Jim. Um, so I'll tell you the way that I kind of worked on that, Jim, flexing that muscle was I just started drawing whatever I saw, right? Um, and what I mean by that is like I'll just pick up an object and draw it. Um, and I did that forever before I started actually trying to draw specific things, and. The reason I'm saying that is like, instead of focusing so much on how to draw, I just drew. And over time, you build up this like database of, oh, I've drawn a cup. I've drawn a book. I've drawn a thing. So what I mean by that is just pick something up, like this coffee cup and draw it, draw it, try it out. You know what I mean? Um, give it a go. See what it looks like. Um, and then don't be afraid to add like a, a neat flare onto it or, you know, and um, the other thing I do is I just draw without, I draw without, I draw sort of like writers, because you'll hear writers talk about turning off that inner writer. I do that with art. I don't criticize when I draw. I just draw. Now, there, <laughs> there's two ways to look at this. You're going to draw some crap, clearly, because sometimes you're you, it's just not going to work out. But what you're going to do is you're going to kind of flex that muscle and you're going to let your body just create right and over time you get good at just spontaneous drawing just drawing for the fun of it um and that's sort of what i've done is just you know allowed myself to just create and um and so that that fear or that inhibition of like drawing something that isn't good just kind of goes away with after a while you're just like well screw it i'm gonna draw and if i don't like it i learned something from it right and that's sort of the way I look at it now. <clears throat> so, yeah. Learn by doing. 100%. I want, like, a little thing here, but we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Let's do some little steps. What do you guys think? Would there be, like, little steps going up to the door? Or I think there should be. Let's do, um... Yeah. Yeah, but that's my biggest suggestion, Jim. Is just draw. Just draw. Don't Don't worry about it. Like... You know, you're going to make stuff. Sometimes you're going to hate it. And sometimes you're going to love it. What in clouds and such. And see, so for me, so I'll tell you exactly how I would approach that. Let's add a new layer. I'll, I'll show you a trick that I do with this. So what I do is I just kind of get in my head like, okay, you said clouds, right? All right just drawing yeah 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 thank you i appreciate it shadow so here's what i do like if i want to draw clouds let's draw clouds all right so let's start with the way that i traditionally draw clouds i usually draw like a flat line like this and i'll come off the corner and i'll just sort of right this is the way that i traditionally draw clouds i just have fun like that the other way i draw clouds is i'll just sit here and I'll just experiment with, like, shapes if I wanted a fun, rounded-looking cloud, right? There we go. There's a cloud, right? Or you may be like, well, I don't want it that shape. Okay. So you just sort of, maybe you want it a little smaller. You know, something like that. Just just have fun with it, you know? Um, you just, just draw. Like, come up with different ideas. Generate content. You know what I mean? Try something different. Um, try taking this. Here you go. Here's a different cloud altogether. You ready? Let's try something like this. You know, you could do some clouds in the sky like that, like almost really thin clouds. You see, it, it's it's all about just the process of creating and not worrying about like what it's gonna be. Just have fun. Um, and 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 let me tell you another. Let me tell you something really cool, Jim. This is something I've noticed, especially with animation. That's all true. A lot of people get focused on making sure that an animated scene looks perfect. But in reality, when someone's watching animation, they're only watching that static scene for a brief time before it moves to a completely different scene or the screen starts to move, right? You can get away with some 
unique Im improvisations on things because you're you're presenting brief moments in time that they're going to see quickly. So with the animation, don't worry so much about like people, our brains like here, here's a great exercise. Let me show you this. I'm going to show you a really cool exercise. I'm going to draw something. You ready? All right, what is that? Most people right away, they're gonna be able to resemble, they're gonna know what that is, right? Or what I'm trying to portray here because it makes up basic shapes, right? Well, we can get even simpler with this. So let's say we went like this. See, again, people are gonna know what that shape is. They're gonna know that I'm trying to draw a vehicle. Same thing like this. If I just went as basic and listen like this, you, you, our brains are very good at processing data and figuring out what it is that we're seeing. You're seeing a car, right? No matter how simple I make it, your brain knows it's a car, right? And our brains have a way of doing that. They have a way of seeing things, even if it's not highly detailed. So what I've done over the years is I've worked on less detail and just more letting people's own imagination kind of create the art and you can get away with that for sure so you know just just have fun with it man just have fun with it and it'll click it'll click uh butter and jared animated twitch <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 We'll do some little steps right here. Boom. I like this. This is going to look good. We'll actually take these. We're going to center them on the door a bit more like this. And then when we turn the opacity back up on this guy, yeah, that's going to look good. You're going to see the step behind there. That'll look nice. Yeah, buddy. Of course. I can ever help. Uh, feel free. I, 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 uh, you know, I'm a big believer in sharing knowledge and, and helping other people understand, you know, and trying to motivate. Because, I mean, I, I feel like the world needs more people to just help people out. I mean, you know, I will say this. When I got into art, I, uh, you know, just getting basic answers to questions was difficult. You know, how to how to make a transparent file, for example. If you don't know how to make a transparent file, that's a confusing thing, right? And just having somebody say, oh, go like this, you know, it can it can mean the difference from somebody who's just upstarting or, or, or beginning their creative process. It's a really important thing to, you know, one of the best things we can do is help inspire and help other people progress. It really is. And you can you can help yourself become a better artist by doing that because when you guys ask me questions, I refresh things that I already know. So it helps me to kind of go back and, oh yeah, like this. You know what I mean? So it's an important thing. Yeah, let's go like this. And then what we'll do is, we're just going to have some fun. We'll do a little, uh, we'll do like a little weird woodcut shape here. Like maybe it's a little leaf or a bush or something. I don't know. Something above the door, like a sign, maybe. Whatever it is. Yeah, sure. And then we'll um, we'll keep that the way it is. Now we're going to. This is going to be the side of the house, so we're going to fill that with wood. So let's go ahead and do that now. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to make the wood color. And then great part is I can always adjust this wood later to whatever I want. And I can add more details and stuff. We're not done. I want the door to be green. For sure. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and turn the grass up. Nice. I'm digging it already. Uh, let's make the steps the same color. Actually, yeah, you know what? Now, do you guys want to see um, how I would shade this or 
do you want to see a shading technique? It, I'm not sure how far I want to get into shading it, but I can share it for sure. Uh, let's copy this color and let's go darker. I want to go darker even yet. And then I want to go even darker on this one. So we can see the variety on the bushes. Nice. Now, I want the door to be a greenish. Yeah, digging it. And then we'll do a gold, sort of. Uh, not gold enough for me. Much better. Okay. Grab you. Oh, we need a darker shade of that brown. Perfect. I'm looking at this. I'm not liking this. I, I thought maybe it'd be kind of cool, but we're going to get rid of you. Now, for the... Love the ground, the door. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a nice green, dude. That's like a that's good. Digging it. I want this to be sort of a beige up top. Uh, let's go with here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. This is looking like a hobbit hole to me. And we'll do some more with the grass up top. And then we'll get into, we'll add some more details. Hey, that way we can come in and we can do... Here, grab this. And see, this is, when you look at that, now, this is, this is my opinion, right? This is a really detailed picture, considering, you know, it was made in, um, Tahoma. I mean, this is, you know, there's a lot going on here. But that's the goal here, is I want to sort of, um... I want to do that, and kind of showcase, you know, art being created in the software. Now, see, this is where it gets a little finicky with vectors. And I'm going to show you a trick with this, okay? You see how the yellow is filling, spilling into this frame here? You'll hear people a lot talk about it gets a little finicky with vectors in Tahoma. And it does. It can be a little weird, all right? So you see how, like, some of these colors are here? I'll show you my process for correcting that here in just a bit. Um, okay. All right, so the way I do it is, I would group this into a shape like this, right? This entire thing here. And did you see how it, it broke this? And this is one of the problems. It can get, you know, color and fill can get odd. And that's why you sometimes have to, the way I'll say it is you gotta kind of break things down. Um, and I try not to use this trick unless I have to, but I'll show you. All right. So for that one, we'll fill that there. All right. Let's take this guy and we'll go like this. Oh, nope. Brush, please. So basically you just come and you color behind. And this is a technique very similar to like, you'll see artists use for when they're filling, you know, um, like paint behind, like comic book artists and stuff. Basically, you'll just create that shape and then set it in there. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's get, now this bottom one, what am I gonna do for you? I want that to be a darker shade of that cream. So we'll just come down here like this. Yeah, I like that. It's almost like a, yeah, that looks good. And then we can keep adding those details and such. And then we'll add some glare to the window. We'll add some more of greenery. Mm. 
I don't want that there. Let's do more. That's looking good. All right, let's go ahead and get the window filled. Uh, so we'll go like this and I'll show you how I do it. Go cool ahead, yeah. There's different ways to kind of get around it. So a lot of people with this software, they start having trouble with the fills, right? And, and I will admit the vector fills in this can be weird. So what I would do is group that and then kill the stroke. Now, when I, when I say that, what it does is it, when you have to do it occasionally, you just come in here and you just modify these shapes like this, right? You just kill the stroke down and you just make the shape. Now it's not a pretty way to do it and it, it can be a hassle, but I will say I don't get it often. It's a very rare occurrence that I have to come in and do that by hand. It does happen and you know, it's not fun when it does, but it's a pretty, pretty quick, easy fix. Okay. Now let's, and that's not behaving. Why are you not behaving? I'm going to guess it's because of this. Or here. Okay. That's fine. We'll just go like that. You all going? Go scan. You got everything you need? Sonic? You're getting Sonic? What am I getting? Nothing. Nothing? Oh my God. Let's go, please. Yes, stinker. Have fun, guys. Is what's her name going or? All right. No. Nice. Yeah, we'll get all this coloring done. And then for the sky, I'll just go like this. We'll take G, we'll go back here. And we'll go here. We'll go rectangle. And we'll just go like this and we'll fill it and we'll cut that. And we'll get that done here in a minute. And then we'll add a little chimney. Let's do that now. Actually, you know what? I think I'll do the chimney on this layer. Uh, let's go like this. Actually, you know what? I think I want it to be a brick chimney. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do a little brick chimney. I'm going to actually hand draw this out because that's what I feel like doing. So we'll take this. We'll do the same thing. We'll go down to like 25% opacity just so we can sort of see what we're working with. And then we'll just kind of hand draw this bad boy out. And yeah, good. Is that too wide? No, I don't think so. Now we'll take this. I want a slight warp to it, I think maybe. Yeah. Proto running around. Good. Good. And yeah. And see, we're just giving it that hand drawn sort of look. And then what we'll do here is we'll just kind of have it come out past. And then hopefully all these fill in with color properly. And I'm letting them snap in. I'm letting the shape snap in. You see that? Then I'll just take this. I'll make a reddish kind of color. Or like a brick. Like a fired red, right? And I'll just kind of intersect these colors around. I'll just kind of play with them. And then I'll do a 
darker variation. We'll just kind of go like that, right? And we'll take this here and go back to 100% and boom. You got a little, uh, you got a little chimney hanging out the top there. And then of course I can take this and, you know, reshape it, resize it, whatever I want to do there. And we'll keep it on the same layer and we'll just do a little smoke coming out of this. Actually, I, I want to do it a little differently than I've done it in the past. We'll kind of go like this. And we'll have it get bigger. Uh, so we'll turn this off and we'll kind of go like this. Yep, that's fine. Perfect. All right, now we'll take this here, smoke, fill. Yep, good. And then of course we could shade that in if we want or whatever. And of course we can make smaller variations here. However we want to do it. Yeah. Hey, Angelie, how you doing? Um, we'll get on this layer here. We'll grab this darker and fill that in. So then on this layer. Yep, we'll go there. We'll keep it there. And then we'll go back on this layer and we'll just add in some small details and stuff. Oops, wrong color. Good. And then I'll work on some shading and some details and stuff. And then here. Good. Fill that. Nice. Here we'll go with a gray. I don't like that. I want it lighter. So we'll go more like that. Nice. And I don't think we'll add some details in the bottom and over here and stuff. We'll go back in here. Grab this. And then we can sort of play with this if we want. Yeah. And that's changing because of the, the way the vector shapes are filling. So we'll, we'll change the color at, it, at its root when we get done with it. For now, we're going to turn the... Yeah. We'll just kind of go here like this. And that feels acting funny because of the thing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You make it look so easy. <laughs> Thank you, man. One piece at a time. Yeah, dude. Like, you know, just, uh, you know, the approach is just to have fun with it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, don't, don't think so much about it. Just have fun. You know, that's what I'm always telling people. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like a lot of people, you know, they just really get inside their own head with, you know, art in general. And they, and they get, they get stressed up or worked up about it, you know? And, uh, they, um, they allow themselves to sort of, uh, I don't know, you know? And it's like, you don't have to just have fun with it, man. Just have fun. <clears throat> what drawing tablet do you use? You want to see? I'll show you. You ready? You're probably not going to leave me at first, but I'll show you right there. Good old mouse. That's all I use. I am a, I am a, depending on who you speak to, I, I'm a, I'm a glutton for punishment, I suppose. Um, I prefer drawing with a mouse. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. I think, uh, yep. Yep. I, uh, I, uh, I just prefer it. It works for me, right? 
But yeah, Darren, that that's what it's all about, right? Like, I don't, I try not to think like too, uh, too critically on what I do is I get an image in my head. I wanted to draw a hobbit hole, right? So I, and I will show you the very first item I drew was right here. I drew this fence post right here. That was my very first item. And then I just expanded from there, right? So the idea with it is, is to just sort of get the idea up here, what you want, your end goal. I want a hobbit hole. That's what I'm drawing. And then just draw, you know, draw a window, move it around, draw a door, move it around. But see, I will say this, Darren, that's a reason I love vector is because you'll notice, and I'm sure you see this while I draw, I'm moving things, I'm reshaping things, I'm, you know, stretching things, I'm, I'm grabbing vector points and moving them. That's the way I work. I look at drawing almost as like a, uh, kind of like a, a, a molding process, right? I lay down images and then I work toward that final solution um, instead of looking at it like, and I guess that's why vector works for me is because of the process in which I do it. Um, I don't draw like a couple strokes and then, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it's my process, I guess, and the way I, I kind of design. You probably saw I did. Yeah, it's, I recognize your name from uh, Darren's uh, Darren's uh, Discord, I believe, right? Yep. Then I trace him and tell me, yeah, nothing wrong with that. So what's funny about that, it's funny you mentioned that. I, I use Inkscape as well in early, but lately, so here's some characters I've drawn into Homa. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing, I animate in Tahoma, but I'm kind of doing this process by where I'm, I'm getting back to just drawing in Tahoma because I'm a big believer in creating the art in the software, right? Um, nothing wrong with importing, but I really like being able to create on the fly. So if I want to make a fire or an eyeball or something, I want to just be able to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of spending a, a couple days just drawing in Tahoma, not really thinking about animating. I'm just having fun with the the idea of let's make shapes, and um and and I like to do this once in a while just to kind of refresh because I feel like it's important to kind of um just uh, work on creating art right um, because I feel like a lot of times it's and I know I'm guilty of this when I open to Homa I jump straight into that animation mindset instead of saying like hey let's make sure that what I'm drawing looks good. And so lately I've just been like, hey, let's sketch. Let's just sketch. So what I'm doing is all these layers, instead of using them for animation, I'm just drawing different stuff on them. You know, you can see it's all in one file. So I'm literally just creating these sketches and I'm just having fun with making art. Um, and, you know, this isn't something you have to do. It's just my own personal thing lately. I'm just sort of just having fun with the idea of creation, you know? Um, because I feel like it's an important thing to do. And I feel like sometimes as artists, we tend to kind of get away from that because we start focusing so heavily on, um, we start focusing so heavily on the animation that we're not thinking about the process of making the art. Right. And uh, I know I'm guilty of that. So lately I've just been sort of just having fun. And this is my version of a sketch. You can see you doing it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just, just goof, dude. And so what I'll do a lot of times, Darren, is when I'm not live, I'll just open software and I'll draw, man. I'll just, I'll just draw stuff. I'll just lay stuff down and see where it takes me. I'll make a shape. I'll draw an image. Now for the texture on the house, here's how I want to do this. I don't know if I want to make it look like brick. But yeah, interly, uh, you know, it's certainly possible with a mouse. I mean, you don't you don't have to have a drawing tablet. Um, you know, sure, if, if you're comfortable with a drawing tablet, of course, go with it. But it's not necessary. And I kind of like to be that rogue that draws with a mouse because I think it's cool to show people that you can make art with a mouse, <laughs> you know, because I think a lot of people, they, they start making art and they just instantly assume uh, that, you know, you have to have a drawing tablet, which is utterly not the truth. Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. Coach. Yes. It adds so much like well, this looked good when it was just line art, but it didn't have this level of depth. Right. Um, and it's definitely, you know, becoming must be a bot, huh?
Um, great advice. Just like drawing someone offline. You really need, you have to, man. You've got to spend that time and just, just doodle. It's important. You don't. And coach, I tell you, I, I see, you know, the, the biggest reason I like to do this because then I've seen people do this. They say, well, you know, I can't make art because I don't have this software or I can't make art because I don't have a drawing tablet. And it's like, no, that's not entirely true. And and the reason I do this is I like to I like to help people find programs like Tahoma and be able to help people find programs that they can afford free or cheap and then give them the alternative to what is, you know, an expensive drawing tablet. Because, I mean, let's be real. We live in a world where money matters. And unfortunately, not everybody can go out and afford to spend a couple hundred dollars on a drawing tablet. It makes sense, you know, and. And so I like to give people those alternatives so that if they feel like, hey, I really want to draw, you know, they can do it. Yep, pillars. Yep. And so you'll notice, like, I'm a huge fan of free and, like, open source, like Blender, Tahoma. I use a lot of software that has no cost. <clears throat> And I've got a lot of people in my community who do the same thing. Uh, you know, they uh, they they enjoy using open source or no cost things or, you know, you know, I enjoy using a mouse. Me too, dude. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yep. Well, like if we turn this off for a minute, right? Let's go down here to this dude. Okay, where this monster was. Let's draw a little baby version of this monster real quick. We'll kind of do a little, a little spin off of this, right? all the time buying X, it absolutely will not coach. <clears throat> you can go out and you can buy a $5,000 computer. You can buy a $2,000 drawing tablet monitor screen. You can go and buy the most expensive drawing software in the world. And it's still not going to make you an artist, right? The only thing that's going to make you an artist is putting in the work and putting in the time and caring about what you're making, not how much you've spent on something. You know, having the, the best this isn't going to equate to being an artist, period. Um, art is derived by creation. Um, and that's something that a lot of people, they, you know, they fail to understand. Um, you know? Thinking their necessities. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you look at me, dude. I draw with a mouse. I use free software. And I focus on what can I make, not what do I need. Right? Um, that's what I focus on. It could, but that's also like saying, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to look at what you need, right? Enterly, it's easy to look at what you need instead of what you have and what you can already do, right? And I think we're all guilty of that. You know, I'm not shaming anybody. I'm just trying to give alternatives. Would speed up process? No, I don't think so. For me, it wouldn't enter. Uh, I, I have a graphics tablet. I don't use it. I have two graphics tablets. I don't use them. <laughs> I don't find them comfortable. And I actually absolutely don't enjoy drawing in them. Um, and for me, they hinder my process. Um, because to me, it feels convoluted. That's me personally, right? That's not you. That's not Darren. That's not Vale. That's not Coach. That's my personal take on it. Uh, cause like I do a lot of other art interly. Like I don't just do, um, I don't just do like in Tahoma. I do a lot of like, um, I do a lot of art period, uh, like a lot of vector art and I, every single thing like this here, all of this was drawn with a mouse. I don't use, I don't use a graphics tablet for anything that I do. Nothing. Um, everything I draw is done 100% with a mouse. Um, and it's personally, it's just the way that I work. Right, like this, this little scene. We did this live on stream. Um, and um, I am comfortable doing what I do, you know, and it works for me. Um, so, yeah. You know, and I tell people, if you feel you need a graphics tablet, then definitely, without question, go get one. But I will also tell people, just because you have a fancy graphics tablet doesn't mean you're going to be an artist. <laughs> right?
But see, the, the thing is with that veil, that's a, that's a, um, you know, we, we all, a lot of artists have been stuck in that clutch before where we feel like, oh, I have to have this or I have to have that. And that is a huge misconception, which is why, you know, here's another one. Here's another misconception. You don't need to go to art school to be a great artist. That is absolutely and utterly not an expectation, right? I have friends who are phenomenal artists who have never been to a single art school. Not once. Now, would it help? Sure. Is it a requirement? No. <laughs> you know? So we just put this little stack of eggs around here, right? You need, well, I, I would almost agree with you on that, Vale. I would almost agree with you on that. And and I've heard that said before, and I, and I would agree. Because I think uh, the biggest thing, uh, I think the biggest thing that people fall into is imitation, right? They fall into, instead of creating for their own sake, they get into imitating what they've seen or what they think think is art right instead of saying like you know oh i'm gonna make art they, they're like oh this is what art is per se you know what i'm saying and that is in some ways more dangerous than just learning what art is because now do i think people need to understand the fundamentals like shading coloring sure absolutely but that is also not required to learn in an art school by any any stretch of the imagination. And if anybody says it is, well, you know, hey, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I don't agree. I think that we're all capable of learning what art is without having to spend $50,000 or more, you know. Yes, I've done in Krita. Yep, I use Krita as well. Um, I do, um, so some of the softwares I use generally, I use Affinity Designer, Inkscape, which you had said you do, I think. Um, I use Krita. I use Clip Studio Paint occasionally. I'm, I'm kind of getting good with that. I use Blender. Uh, I do 3D models and stuff like this as well. Um, I'm also learning 2D in Blender um, because I want to get better with 2D art in Blender. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of different things. I'm more of like a, this is what I feel like doing today kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of an all around kind of dude. <laughs> But I love Krita. I think it's a great piece of software. And I think it's uh, it's only getting better. I think it's a lot like Blender. It just keeps getting better, right? And I think it has so much potential. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Vale. I agree, though. I agree with that statement. Um, I think the problem is, it's like anything, right? Like, art is, art is such an expression thing. Like, you know, it, it's really a matter of just creating what you want to create right? And finding your process. And you guys hear me talk about that a lot. I constantly work on figuring out my process on a software, whether it be Krita, Tahoma, Blender. I'm always working on like, what does my process look like? How do I create art? Because to me, that's key. It isn't so much how the software works. It's how do I make the software work for me? So that when I get into Blender or whatever it is, I know how I'm going to make art, you know? Um, um, you know, Yes, Blender has yep, yeah, Blender has 2D animation as well. You are 100% correct. Um so I made I have a raid scene that I use entirely and so I'm actually recreating my raid scene. Here's the intro for it. This was all drawn in Blender with the parallax and everything. Um and so I'm I'm currently recreating that raid scene in Blender in 2D. Uh and I'm going to incorporate some 3D elements into it as well. Uh, but like, here's the next scene, me with the cats at the computer. And you can see the, the 3d, the three dimensional depth there with the cats and everything. Um, but yeah, yep. Yep. I mess with a lot of different things. Um, yep. How do I want to do this? Put like a little baby on his shoulders with like one tooth. Kind of like that idea. Yep. I had a lot of urging to try Blender, and I'm really glad I did. I, I was really scared of trying Blender for a long time. 
and then I finally bit the bullet and did it, and I'm really glad I did. Uh, I see Blender definitely being a big part of my tool set. Um, for sure. And I do a lot of, like, tutorial stuff uh, where I show people, like, on YouTube and stuff, just kind of how I do what I do. And, and, you know, and I don't profess it to be the only way to do stuff, right? Like, this is just the way that I do things. And, you know, I like to share my processes with people. So that if they, too, want to make art, they can sort of see how it's made from my perspective. Let's go like this. We'll give it no head again. So we'll go. Yeah, we'll do like a little baby one, like sort of hanging on in the back. And we only need to draw like that much of it, right? Because it's going to essentially, eh, we will do a little arm in the front. I like the little arm. We'll kind of. We'll do a little a little arm like this, like he's sort of hanging on. My daughter's cats are walking around making noise. <laughs> Almost like a little cat, right? Oh, is that what you do all your edits and stuff in? Is a uh, critter? All right, now. You see how this guy has this orange coloring despite there being no black line there? I'll show you how I get to that process. I, uh, I want to buy Krita on uh, Steam. I'm going to one of these days just to help support because I know it's free, but just to help support the development. You know what I mean? I'm a big fan of that. Okay. And now we're just going to do the same thing we did with the adult one. All right, you see how that works, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Very cool, dude. Yeah, I want to buy it on uh, on Steam just to support, you know, because I, I'm a big fan of supporting these developers because, I mean, you know, it's amazing that they, they do what they do to provide these softwares for everybody. And... It's, it's a nice gesture to be able to support what they do. If you can. <laughs> Useful blend modes. Oh, do they really? Vale? I've never looked. I need to use Krita more. I really do. <laughs> like a little kid version of it. He's rawr. And then we turn our hero back on. He's like, um, what? And you see the eggs. And then if I wanted to for this... We could come in here. Do a quick little scene. Right? Absolutely. 
coach. And I and I try to, you know, like um uh, I'm going to get once I'm done doing my um once I'm done doing my um blender tutorials that I already have, Vale told me about the Blender Cloud, which is directly supports Blender. I'm going to grab that so that I can, you know, um you know, the development money helps support Blender. And um I'm going to work through their training material as well and sort of uh, just see what that's all about. It's a good thing to do. I mean, you know, if you enjoy the software and you use it, you should absolutely consider, you know, helping to support if you can. How can Tahoma get supported? Great question. Um, so when it, before with the developer that it is now, that developer had a Patreon. I don't know if the current developer has a Patreon. I need to look into that. Um, he's super supportive though. Like I've suggested ideas for vector tools and they've been implemented. Uh, really, really supportive. Um, and that's really the only way I think to currently support Tahoma is that developer that's working on the current iteration. Um, I'm gonna, I did support the old developer on Patreon, but he handed the project off. So he's not currently working on it anymore. So I don't know. Um, I'll need to find out if the current developer has like a Patreon or something. If he does, yeah, that'd be a good thing to jump onto. But, um, I mean, you know, it helps, right? Because they take their time to create these tools. And, I mean, you look at what people are doing with these tools. You know, it's good to help support the, you know, the creation of the softwares. You know? That's a good point. I'm going to message him on Discord when I get off stream and see if he has a Patreon or something. It's, uh, what is his name? He's in the Tahoma Discord. Hang on a second. Do -do -do -do. His name is Monning John. M A N O N G J O H A N. I'll copy it and drop it in here for you. He is the one who's doing the current development. All right, let's go back here. Yeah, that looks cool. We'll do that for like some rock effect. And see, my goal with using Tahoma and stuff is just tell people learn about it. Learn about what it is as a tool. See if it's something they want to incorporate into their workflow. Is there still there? And I need to look because if there is, I need to jump on that because I supported um, the old developer on Patreon for a while before he had to step away. Um, and it'd be good to do to help, you know. Yeah. New here, please remember to like and follow. Thanks. Hey, coach. You're awesome. Too good to me. But yes, you are 100% correct. Coach, you know this. I am terrible about those things. Like, that is something <laughs> I just don't do well. <laughs> I'm good at making art. That That is the extent of my, my, uh, my ability. Making the art. I always laugh about that to Galen. Like I'm terrible about, I'm terrible about like 
promoting myself and in, in, in I, I really am but is what it is if i help people i help people you know I haven't found his patreon i'm gonna look because it'd be good to see if he has one because i'd like to help out if i can absolutely absolutely i appreciate you coach i appreciate you Let, let, let's go like this. And see, like, look at that right there. You see what we just did? We took what was that creature with the original guy we had. We added another little tiny version of it. We added the little egg pile. We added the floor, the shading, the rocks, and just a quick sort of, you know, filler up to what was an image. And, uh, you know, it works. It's cute. And this is the style and the the flow that I'm going to be using in a lot of my um, a lot of my like uh, little comics that I want to do. So yeah, good stuff. How long have I been streaming? Two hours, about it's about fair. So yeah, I'll probably I'll probably get off here in a bit and uh, get something to eat and hang out a little bit. But yeah, does anybody have any questions or anything? Or is everybody pretty? Just kind of chilling. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's kind of a different process. It's, um, you know, today was more of just drawing in Tahoma, but I feel like in a way this is just as effective as teaching people how to animate in Tahoma, right? Because again, part of the animation process is understanding how to make the art, right? Um, it's not just about animating. It's about creating the asset. So I, I feel like it's an important step as well. So Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you liked the uh, the process and the idea and the style and everything. Um, thank you, Enterly. I appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you, thank you. And again, if you guys are not following, Coach does really, really good informational stuff on YouTube, tech-related things, stuff like that. Um, Darren T is a great uh, animator and educator on YouTube as well. Uh, make sure you follow those two if you guys aren't. If you're interested in their content, would highly appreciate it. Um, if you guys like my content, feel free to drop a follow. Uh, I do a lot of educational stuff on like Blender, Tahoma, Vector Art, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, thank you for uh, coming out today. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, we'll be doing some more stuff over here on YouTube. Um, so look out for that. And uh, yeah, have a great day. I'm going to hop off here, eat, and go be a dad. So yeah, take care of yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. And until then, take care.